Okay guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing something um, which I should have done. After I replaced the CCV on the E61, obviously I did it on my E60 when I first done the CCV and now I'm gonna be doing it on the E61. But obviously, as you guys know, I wanted to drive it all after everything was sorted to make sure everything was fine. Now that everything's fine, oil's fine, everything is fine on the car, the one thing you need to do, obviously, as you know, when a PCV ruptures, is that it causes oil to get into the combustion chamber. Now, when it causes it to get into the combustion chamber, as you know, oil and fuel together is very sticky. It causes the piston rings to be very sticky, or oil control rings, as some of you might call it. And obviously, in the chamber, it's still chucking blue smoke where it, the fuel ain't clean yet. So today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to clean the piston rings and the oil control rings, as you'll call it, on the E61 on the M52 engine. Now, I did this on mine, it worked a complete treat. Please be aware that after this, you do have to leave it set in for quite a few hours to nearly overnight. Then when you start the car, your car will chuck a lot of smoke. Now the method we're gonna be using is inject the cleaner down the spark plug holes. After we've done that, which I'm gonna show you how much you gotta put in and how to do it, I'll be back to show you how, um, how much smoke comes out and how different the car drives. Obviously, you'll then feel the, a lot more power because obviously when the CCV blows, the cylinder is covered, which means when the fuel's going in, it's just soaking in the fuel instead of letting it just sit in the cylinder to be burned off by the spark plugs. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to remove the spark plugs again. This is gonna be, obviously you've seen my video changing them, but I'm gonna show you how to get them out and then what we're gonna do is put the injector cleaner in. Okay guys, so as you can see, the ignition coils are here. You're gonna to wanna to pull them out and obviously you're gonna to wanna to remove the spark plugs. Now, like I say, I'm gonna to have to remove all the cowling again to get to the spark plugs down the back there. Um, but obviously, as you can see, I haven't put the engine cover back on and this is purely why I haven't put it back on because of that reason. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the ignition coils. So you just wanna pull them up as I showed you before, get a screwdriver to prise them out if they don't come out and then start removing the spark plugs. Each one in turn, we're gonna pour inject to clean down. Once that's done, you need to leave all the bits sitting on a workbench for now and leave them there to re-put them back in after you've done this. After this has been done, you will then be able to put the spark plugs back in and what you're gonna have to do before you put the spark plugs back in is crank the engine over with no, ig no ignition coils and no spark plugs and put a towel over all the spark plug holes to cover any liquid that's gonna shoot out and you need to get someone to crank the engine while you do that because obviously liquid will shoot out from the cylinders as it's compressing So and turning over, sorry. So you need to be aware of that and make sure you're doing it correctly. So, as you know guys, the majority of this work is removing all the plastics on this car. As you can see, I've already got the spark plugs out and I just want to show you the spark plugs. As you knew, when I changed these, were new. Now look at the state of them, how black they are already. And there's not no oil residue on them. This is just black from burning. Burning oil that was in the combustion chamber. Now that's going to cause the car to rough, rough run because there's still oil in the combustion chamber. And that's the other one. And then you've got the other one right here. Now that's all three of them so far and I don't expect the other three not to be exactly the same. So this is why I'm saying why you have to clean a combustion chamber because of this reason, the piston rings. Because these people who own this were driving around in it for so, so long with it blown that I just don't know how much oil has been sucked into the combustion chamber. And this was the same with my car. This is the thing a lot of people and garages will make you believe that this thing doesn't go in this country because we don't have the weather for it. So this is the whole majority of the work that you need to be doing. So as you can see, there's all six spark plugs there. And as you can see, they're all the same color, which are black like this. This is either from carbon buildup or just, as I say, from the crankcase ventilation blowing too much and it was just there too long. So now, like I said to you, what we're gonna go and do is as you can see, all the spark plugs are out. Everything's out of the way, which is right here. Now we're gonna pour the injector cleaner straight down the spark plug holes. And you wanna make sure it does go into the spark plug holes or not anywhere else. The best thing I use is an egg cup and pour it straight in because it's more accurate and you don't spill it anywhere. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm now gonna get the injector clean and I'm gonna show you how much you gotta put in. So, as you can see guys, I'm about to pour the injector cleaner in. Now, what you wanna do now, I'm gonna be pouring it from the bottle now, I'm using Red X. You can use any, but I'm choosing to use Red X because it's, like I say, something we sell here and it's known and it's cheap and you don't, injector cleaner is injector cleaner. Now all you wanna do is just pour a little bit in. You don't wanna to pour too much in because you don't wanna end up flooding, hydrolocking the engine. You just wanna pour enough in to soak each cylinder. Like that. Each cylinder in turn until you get enough. Now the other three here, because they're in such a complicated place, you have to use like a funnel and soak them. Now that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna get a funnel and we'll be back after. So now I'm gonna do the other cylinder. So what we're gonna do is pour a little bit in there. Like that. And you can just add a bit more 
but you please got to remember do not start this car up and think you can put the spark plugs back in and start it up you cannot do that you have to crank the engine over first without anything in there if you do that you'll hydro lock your engine because you've got to remember the car's dme will automatically sends fuel into the combustion chamber you don't want to overflow the engine or the combustion chamber now as you can see i'm just going easy you want it to go into the combustion chambers and the whole idea is you want this to sit and it should free up any sticking parts any of the sticky residue that is on the oil control rings as you can see i poured it in now you don't want to use every bit of the injector cleaner like i say that's enough to just clean it and that's all you want to do is you want to put enough in to clean it now what we're going to do is we're going to leave this car sitting for quite a few hours to overnight and we'll be back after to show you how it runs like and we're going to show you how to turn it over beforehand and then you reinsert the spark plugs and then crack on with putting everything back together and then what you'll see the amount of smoke that it chucks out the back of the exhaust with all the blue smoke from all the oil but we've got to leave this now overnight to soak up and clean out the piston rings okay guys so as you know we've been removing the spark plugs from the cylinder and sorting out trying to clean the oil piston rings the oil control rings piston rings whatever you want to call them now it's nearly three o'clock in the morning here and we did this at 3 a.m today i started a job now i'm just about to go out now and start reinstalling everything for the car and putting everything back together and obviously you guys are going to be coming with me as you see me put it all back together when i get the spark plugs in where they're going to start up the car obviously i've got a rag ready to put over the cylinders to obviously crank it over and when we crank it over you're going to hear the engine obviously it's just going to run but it's not going to turn over it actually will turn over but it's not going to start sorry and now when we when it starts we will then be able to clear it will see a load of smoke come out obviously because it's dark you probably won't be able to see it too clear but i'm still going to show you anyway because at the end of the day we have to finish this video and obviously you got i started a video i don't want you guys to miss this obviously because it's going to show you how to clean your oil control rings and your chambers after a blown ccv so let's go and get it done so as you will see the um, cylinders have been soaking for the last well nearly nine hours with the injector cleaning because i did this at 3 p.m today and obviously i've put everything back on all the plastics i haven't bolted it back in but what we're going to go ahead and do now is remove the brace again remove everything and then crank it over but obviously i need to put a towel down first and cover the cylinders to stop the fluid pushing out now you don't want to be sticking rags down there or any kind of tissue or any kind of thing down the spark plug holes because the combustion will pull pull it into the cylinders and you don't want that so you're going to have to do this very carefully and very gently and take your time when doing it don't rush to get the car back together remember do not put the spark plugs back in yet you have to do this to let all the liquid go down to the sump or go through the cat or whatever and when you start it up you'll see a whole clone of smoke come out the back of the exhaust which we'll try and show you after i get everything back together so let's just remove these plastics and then i'm gonna cover the spark plug holes and try and put this camera somewhere so you guys can see when i crank it over so as you can see the spark plug holes are now covered over and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rest the camera right here if i can so you guys can see when I'm cranking over how to do it and then what way to do it because obviously I want you guys to see this in case you have to do this yourself and I have got this as I've got the Hero 7 and I'm filming in super wide view so I don't think you guys will miss this at all you shouldn't miss it anyway so let's go ahead and put the engine over what I'm worried about is that the camera might fall <laughs> So as you can see there guys, I can smell it already where it's been trying to pump the fuel. And obviously it pretty much stinks right there. Very strong from where it's been. Yeah, it smells quite very, quite strong. So obviously what we're gonna have to do is now put the spark plugs back in and refit everything and then get this back to normal and then start the car up. But obviously that's what you wanna do first is crank it over like that and then reinstall everything after it for fitting his reverse spark plugs in and then ignition coils obviously before i put the case back on i need to make sure the car's running fine 
and everything so we'll do that and then we'll come back so as you can see i'm just retightening down the spark plugs now you just want to hand tighten them down um, I'm not going to talk these down, I did when I first fitted them, but I'm not going to be talk talking them down now, there's no need. Um, I talked them down before, but when, you're gonna have to keep, when you have to keep removing them, there really isn't no need, so we're just going to put them back in. So guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to start the car. Now, first time when you start this, the car might struggle to start. It's perfectly normal because you're going to be knowing there's a load of injector cleaner in it. But once it starts, it might rev up higher as also. So I'm just warning you, you're going to see now when I turn it over. And now you'll see all the smoke. As you can see right there, as it's chucking out all that blue smoke, right there. That's all the injector cleaner and all the shit from the piston rings that's chucking out. Don't be alarmed, it's perfectly normal. The car will run like this for a minute until it gets balanced. You're meant to drive it after as well, which we will be doing. But as you can see there, it's letting out all the crap from the cylinders and all the catalytic converter. So guys, that's how you clean a clogged CCV and clogged cylinders and obviously clogged oil control rings and piston rings. Now it is running rough, as you can hear. I can't rev it up because it's quite laid out, but it will I'd balance itself out once it clears all the injector cleaner out of the system. But it will run rough, that's part of it. But as you can see, it's starting to balance out now as the car warms up. And it will just keep smoking, so don't be alarmed. It will keep smoking until it finishes it all off. It might keep smoking for a couple of days, couple of weeks, who knows, but you just have to leave it do its thing. And you may have to do this again depending on how much oil you've got in the cylinders but usually first time works i mean my one after i've done it i did it one time and it worked but who knows as you can see it's still quite smoky and it's still smoking quite bad as you can see right there there's aim all fully out because it's coming all through the exhaust now but that's how you clean them guys your oil control rings and obviously we'll go around to the engine side and we'll check the engine now as you can see, it's going to carry on smoking, so let's go see how the engine's doing. So as you can see, the engine's <coughs> running, and it's running quite well. Obviously, we just got to leave it to do its thing, to clean all the crap out of the engine. And it will balance itself out after. And as you can see, it's starting to balance itself out already. Now what we're going to do, is we're going to leave the video there. And we'll be back in a sec after I take it for a drive, and we'll see how it works out. Okay guys, so I've just come back with the car. The car is driving a lot, lot better now, the C61. It feels just way more powerful. Like, I thought it was natural, you know, as you know, I've been driving a 530i, and it's 268 bhp. This is meant to be 220, but I wouldn't have noticed the difference, to be fair. I could feel it was quite down on power, and I thought that was due to the disc flap, but no funny thing, since doing that injector cleaner, my God, the car feels so much better, and it feels like a rocket. So, all in all, it's cleared out all the crap out exhaust now don't be aware once you go and drive your car after doing this that when you come back you're going to hear your exhaust popping and rattling that's perfectly normal the reason that is because all the injector cleaner has gone through the exhaust all that um, is cast is unburnt fuel so it's just burning it off inside the exhaust but it is a good thing because any oil that's got into the cat it will clean the cat out as well that's why you see a load of smoke but it's a, always a good thing but just as i say do not overfill the injector cleaner during the spark plug holes just try and use, keep it to a minimum. Otherwise you're gonna have to crank the engine quite a lot to drain the oil and you'll be lucky, very lucky, if it doesn't, you'll have to drain your oil out as well because it will get into the sump via the piston rings, or oil control rings as we call them. Now, you won't notice the full effect straight away on the first day. I didn't on my 530i, but as you keep driving and keep driving and the oil starts wearing off from the cylinders, you will notice the improvement on the car. You will have to take it like, I think I realized it after well, after I changed my soul noise to back to BMW one, that's when I actually felt it. Now these ones, as you know, I've got the ch not Chinese, the Febby Bilstein OEM sensors. Now, I, I highly rate Febby Bilstein, but these sensors are crap. 
I would not recommend anyone to go and buy them. This is what I mean about vanosolenoids. No other company can make them. This is a BMW thing only, unless you get BMW ones. The majority of other solenoids are rubbish. It's nothing related to to them, to anything else on the car. It's them stupid solenoids that anyone throwing the fault code. Just them solenoids are not firing the right time the car wants. Now, I know in the USA, you lot won't go and pay the dealer price. You'll drive rock for OEM or clean your original ones. I'm telling you now, here, I am not like that. I will not, I would rather go and pay the full money and know the car, they're gonna last another 100K because I am no way gonna fit cheap junk in the car and keep it running smooth just to save myself money. It is not worth it. This car's worth more than that. These engines are worth more than that. You, and the way there's a true saying here we use, you didn't compromise when you bought it, so why compromise on parts? If you're gonna skimp out on parts, don't own a BMW. You, you cannot own these cars cheaply. That's a full fact. Anyone who tells you otherwise will lie to you. That's why anyone will tell you not to use a Chinese water pump, only use Peerberg. That's an original part from BMW. I'm telling you only use original Vanosonas. Unfortunately, you cannot get away with using cheap parts on these cars. It just doesn't, doesn't work. These cars do not like it. The computers will throw codes. That's the whole reason BMW wasn't stupid when they made these cars. They made it that you can only accept their parts at their current, at their rating. They're not stupid. If you use anything else, the car will fail it or it will fail on its own. So this is it guys. Anyway, that's that video complete. I hope this is gonna help you when you change your CCV, make sure you do this. This video should help you guys out if anyone's having still problems after changing their CCV or, the, or they realize the spot plug is still black. So go and do this tip and tr it's a tip and trick as I like to call it, but it's not really at the end of the day, something that needs to be done. Any garage, proper garage that will change the CCV will do this as well after. So that's it guys. So that'll be it for today guys. Thank you for watching. BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.